in two or three years to make that have an arts industry. Mm. And I feel every single week I'm trying to fight to save the arts. I literally have been planning this concert for probably about six, seven months. I started looking at scores to conduct um, two months ago, maybe. Um, but then I didn't actually really get a chance to do it until Monday, so like four days ago. So I've done all this work, it gets to the Monday, and that's the first time I actually get to get the baton out and start doing my actual job. A lot of different hats to wear to yeah. make it all work. This orchestra isn't about me and it never has been. Forty professional orchestras don't take you on unless you've had experience. But where are young people going to get experiences from? Unless they have £1,500 a year to go and do a youth orchestra. No one has that money. The gigs we're doing is for them and it's given them the opportunity to, I should say, take it into the profession. Been good fun, been good chances for me to get to play some repertoire that when you're at university sometimes you don't get the chance to do. Really? Um, to play principal seats, principal principal parts, so yeah, it's really good fun. I feel that it is incredibly important to encourage young talent yes. without the necessity of them to worry about there's going to be big bills at the end of the yeah. day. Financial's always been the so, biggest, yeah. and it always is in the arts. Like so many places have been cut, yeah. so many arts councils are, council are trying to cut the arts. Yeah. It's the first thing that goes. Here at Exelen, we work exclusively with small businesses, and we're committed to helping them in any. I way. went to that meeting, uh, that mentoring session, thinking um, <laughs> this would be a bit of fun. I'll get a bit of guidance from how the business runs. No way was I thinking that someone was going to turn around and just hand me a cheque for however much money every single year. I was so enthused by his commitment and his dream that I did something I'd normally never do. And that was I decided to back him on the spot. I'll support you for the next three years if you wanted. It was shock to begin with. Then it was kind of excitement. People know me well enough, I'm never speechless, I never cry, I nearly had a tear in my eye today. And then got on the plane and just thought, did that just happen? <laughs> Honestly, that night, I planned the summer concert because I just had someone just going, we're going to help you, so let's do it. I think the audience are great at Edinburgh, but like, we've only ever done it twice. I think it's just a phenomenal concert. I think everyone just loved the atmosphere in that building. Because it's so old as well, it's got a nice history behind it. I think that's definitely why we go to Great Falls. I never ever get nervous now. I've been doing this conducting professionally since I was 17. enthusiasm. It just worked really nicely, like the rehearsal beforehand is always a bit, you get a bit worried after it because <laughs> things don't go right, but actually a uh, bad rehearsal always does it for a good gig, so I think that's really what happened last night. I think tonight it's just going to go to the next step. second concert you, you just relax into it. You've done it once, you know it works, you've created the foundation, all you now have to do is just take it to the next level and the orchestra do that so, so well. So I've got about 400 musicians on my books, so yeah. it all just starts changing and every gig's different. It depends what they can do. Sure. Basically whatever dates they can do, they come and do basically. Um, firstly, thank you very much for last night, the audience loved it. It's quite interesting seeing the difference in the orchestra each year as new students come in and others graduate and the dynamics that comes in with, 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 within the orchestra.
Well, I'm just finishing my postgraduate, so I'm yep. just kind of going out into the profession. Um, it's been great. I've got through a lot of repertoire with the orchestra. Yep. I've uh, had the chance to lead, which is kind of a, a, a unique skill. It's often hard to be able to get a chance to sit in that seat, so I've had that, which has been great. Last year, I think I got, I got connected with a dad um, last year, but we had another concert on and we were going to kind of hook up, but nothing really worked out at that point. Um, and then she was going through Brits Got Talent and we just thought, oh, that's the best time to, to ask her to come from the orchestra. I wanted to see Bo in an orchestra, so last night was, yeah, we could yeah, dream come true. true to say, yeah, it was fun. It's really fun to sing with an orchestra again. There's other events coming up that I'm sure I'll ask her to come and do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think once she's got the buzz for this, yeah. anything West End why she does or anything else, I think she'll. It just it really helps. Like she's now performed in Oxford Live, so everything else will now be a lot easier for her. It'll be a breeze. XLN have, uh, literally said they're going to sponsor the orchestra for the next three years, which means that I could get venues like this put on these concerts because without the funds and without the finance, this would not happen. So can we give a big round of applause for XLN? I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliant. Um, and I'd love to, you know, not only support that, but also help you to the extent I can, you know, on your journey to, to making a, yeah, a world famous Philharmonic Orchestra. For me it was, he said I'm going on the right path and to stick with it. Um, he said I pretty much have done what he did. And to hear that from someone who's got an office in London for a start and like created his own business, it's, all, it's big. It's actually a really nice thing to hear that I'm actually going the same path as he did and I've got the same mentality and the same mindset as he does. Um, so I think I took a lot from that and just thought but I need to be a bit more confident with myself then. Because I've never had anyone back me, I've never had anyone saying you're doing the right thing. The enthusiasm of the orchestra is just incredible and I think the audience really enjoyed it, so I'm happy. You know, after after performance like this, what do you and the orchestra normally do? Is it a wild night clubbing? Or... Uh, we go for a few social drinks. Yeah. Nothing really much. No talk about music. You're not allowed. If you do, you have to buy the round. That's a, that's a real. It's good to get an idea of the composer's diet. Yeah. We'll to it later. What's next? Um, we are doing a concert on the 30th of July with a DJ in Scotland. Uh, it's going to be live and radio, uh, and it's dance hits with orchestra, which will be really cool. So that should be fun. I don't work, okay? It's just having a drive and a determination. If you don't have that, then it's not going to work. Um, it's having a kind of level-headed mind and not thinking that you're better than you are, because if you just take it by step by step rather than jumping, it just you've got you create the foundation. The foundation's now here, so it means that every time I go up step by step, I think it's just going to get even better because I've created the foundation. <laughs> I think the highlight for me is seeing what it does to not just the musicians who are getting these wonderful and diverse opportunities that they wouldn't get, but it's also what it does to the listener. And if we can do that to the listener and make them really happy with the, the art that we do and we all love doing, then we've done our job right. If the listener loves it and respects it and gets something from it, what more can we ask for really?